Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today, if all goes well, we will see the 100th launch of an Ariane 5 rocket. First launched back in June 1996 to not great success, but we'll talk about that later, the rocket has gone on to be a workhorse of the geostationary satellite launch industry. And while this is the 100th launch, it should be noted that it's actually launched more than 100 satellites because it's very common for Ariane launches to actually put two satellites into geostationary orbit. Indeed, while the heaviest satellite ever put into geostationary orbit was launched by SpaceX, the heaviest payload sent towards geostationary orbit was a pair of satellites launched on an Ariane 5 rocket. Now, the Ariane 5 is, of course, uh, the fifth in the Ariane series, right? But Ariane 1 through 4 were all hypergolic propelled, slow changes in evol evolving the rocket design. Ariane 5 was a complete redesign with a central core running on hydrogen and liquid oxygen propelled by a Vulcane engine and a pair of solid rocket boosters on the side, which were apparently derived from French ICBMs. The upper stage on the early G-type Ariane rockets was a uh, hypergolic fueled, but later on they had the Evolution Cryotechnique A Type A. I never mind. It was basically it. They switched over to using a hydrogen upper stage engine, and that's what they currently fly today, with a few exceptions. The one exception where they still fly the old hypergolic stage is when they're launching the European transport vehicle to the space station. That uses the old style um, hypergolic engine. Now there's actually uh, two types of Ariane that, uh, main stage. We have the Type 1 which uses the Vulcan 1 and then later on they have the, the evolved version which got about you know uh, an extra 40% thrust thereabouts. The actual thrust on that Vulcan engine is about one mega newton i believe <laughs> gonna have to do the math on that but quite quite capable but of course most of the launch boost comes from those uh, solid rocket boosters that launch they drop off about a minute or so into flight and uh, the core stage is then able to carry it into orbit the evolved version the thrust is something like 1390 kilonewtons so not bad as I said, originally designed early in the 90s, one of the interesting things was that it was human rated from day one. The original design required that they be able to make this carry the proposed European Space Agency Hermes space plane. Now, <laughs> that of course uh, they did a lot of development on, but they never actually evolved it into a working launch vehicle. And the reason was that just about the time as they were really starting to look at the design of this, they uh, started to get deals with the Russians and the Soyuz became an option and the Hermes essentially got dropped as being an expensive option that they didn't need to develop. It'd be an interesting thing for me to simulate at one point to see just how that would work. But instead, Ariane gets most of its traffic from geostationary satellites, for which it is definitely one of the better options, able to deliver things with lower uh, energy requirements and everything. So yes, Ariane has really been the place to go if you want to get a spacecraft sent into geostationary orbit, because it can get there with less delta V required on your part. So uh, yeah, recently there was one interesting issue where the uh, some launch engineer input the wrong launch azimuth and instead of going into a nice low inclination geostationary orbit the rocket veered off by about 20 degrees and put the spacecraft into an orbit which had about a 20 degree inclination and it took it meant the spacecraft had to use their own propulsion system to correct for this uh, extra inclination and fortunately, one of the spacecraft had originally been intended to fly on a SpaceX Falcon 9 and therefore had been built with a big enough propulsion system, enough propulsion reserves to be able to make this correction. The second satellite, however, had always been specced for Ariane and therefore, yeah, was, uh, had to burn some of its fuel reserve to be able to get into this target orbit. So yeah, let's talk about that launch failure, that very first very high profile. Obviously the rocket was experimental, but because it was experimental, they were looking for a test payload and they found some university team that developed a group of satellites called Cluster. 
So yeah, what happened with that first launch was that the software for the Ariane 4 had in large part been copied over for the Ariane 5. I mean, they redesigned most of the rocket, but there was a few things they could bring over and digital stuff copies rather easily. And uh, the cause for the error was that there was an integer overflow in something called horizontal bias. The horizontal bias was copied into a particular subroutine as a 16-bit integer, but it was taken from a 64-bit floating point number. That meant that when the value got big enough, it would overflow and the software would raise an exception. Now, of course, this was all written in ADA, and ADA is supposed to have amazing, you know, type checking and <laughs> exception handling and all that stuff if it's specced out. But because the software was originally designed for the Ariane 4, which was an older rocket from like 1988, they uh, had cut some corners to save space on the computer, right? So they'd actually, because of the spec of the computer they had, they knew they couldn't check everything, and so they made judgment calls on some of the stuff. Now, horizontal bias was supposed to be used to initialize the inertial guidance platform when it was sitting still on the ground. And they looked at the physics of the situation and said, there's no way this could ever be that big, right? Because the rocket is too slow. That was the main thing. The guidance the initialization software actually kicked in or actually continued to run for about 40 seconds after takeoff. And the reason was that if the engine started or if they got down to zero and then they decided they couldn't launch, they could actually set up for a quick restart and reinitialize everything. So the software was kept running so they wouldn't have to reinitialize the guidance platform. So on the Ariane 5, <laughs> turns out this software wasn't even used because the guidance system was completely different. Um, that physical limitation, that physical limitation was no longer there because Ariane 5 was so much faster. That meant in the first 40 seconds of flight, it was able to exceed the limits that the Ariane 4 would have been able to. So therefore, it was able to hit this overflow condition that had never been seen before because it was a faster rocket and because the code wasn't even needed for this rocket. It doesn't matter that it wasn't needed. The code generated an exception. There was no handler for that, so the computer shut down and then it passed control over to the second backup computer, which hit the same condition immediately and it shut down. Without any guidance computer, the, the control was lost and the vehicle had to be destroyed. So anyway, look, that was a, an ignominious start to Ariane's career, but Ariane 5 has kind of continued and it's become a pretty darn reliable launcher and yeah, there's a pretty good argument. If you've got something that's gonna to go to geostationary orbit, then that is the launch vehicle to use. It's gonna get more mass there at a lower inclination. It'll make your job easier if you've got the money. Now, Ariane 5 still has launches spec'd out, you know, right out into the 2020s. There is a replacement that is being worked on, Ariane 6. Uh, originally, Ariane 6 was going to be smaller and you know, simpler, but it's kind of changed and it's pretty much going to be a, a new, cheaper version of the Ariane 5 with very similar capabilities. But yeah, we're going to see a lot more launches from it in the future. And the one big one that we're really looking for is the James Webb Space Telescope. Of course, it is currently in development hell, still finding a <laughs> finding all sorts of problems over at Northrop Grumman regarding how they're going to build the sun shield, how it's going to unfold and stuff like that. But honestly, that is that is the big Ariane launch that I'm looking forward to. But right now, a few hours out, we're going to get another launch from Ariane 5 and it will pass that magic 100 launch mark. And I hope it goes well. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Mm -hmm.